Good morning. Um, I'm excited to be here with you guys, Lagos Church. I see a lot of new, new faces. My name is Aldo, and like I said, I've been meeting up with Tom Gensler, uh, a person that I'm very, very um, grateful for. He has uh, invested a lot of time in me, and I'm just, I look up to him. You, uh, we're, we're, Tom, would you guys just give, give me a random applause to him? He's definitely, definitely, definitely outreaching the kingdom. He's doing amazing things, guys, and I can see that you guys are doing well as well. Uh, before we start, why don't you guys just bow your heads there. God, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for just uh, giving us the opportunity to be here today. We want to learn something new. I ask, I ask you, Lord, to please just open up our minds, open up our hearts, so that we can understand exactly what, what it is that you want us to learn today, so that we could receive it, we could open it, so that we could just apply it in our lives. In Jesus' name, we ask all this. In your name, Jesus, we say, amen. amen. All right, folks. So today I have something very important for you guys to hear out. Um, just a little nervous here because I have a bunch of notes. But I'm, I'm confident enough. You see, when, when Tom Gensler texted me and said, hey, would you be able to play, uh, preach on the 30th? It's like, literally, I felt, guys, like there was like a, a cup of cold water just kind of just pouring down my, my head, and I was like, you, you see my inner man, my inner feelings, my, you know, emotions kind of kicked in, and I felt like my inner man was telling me, hey, are you going to be able to pull this off? You know, you've never done it. You've never preached in English, like full English, right? And it's like, there were some doubts in between. I was like, hmm, am I going to be able to, you know, pull this off, right? To perform for God, right? And all that to say that I felt like the Holy Spirit was there as well. And I felt like he was telling me, do you really want to glorify me? And in that moment, I literally said, God, I will do anything you want me to do as long as you go up there with me. And so today, I'm here to perform for God. And guess what, folks? We're here on the same team. I want you to know. And as a matter of fact, I want you guys to picture me like this. I'm just a del deliverer guy, guys. I'm here just to deliver a word. I'm, he I'm, I'm, I'm just, literally, folks, just look at me like the postal office guy. You know, they wear shorts, you know. I'm just here to deliver the message and to serve you guys. I'm here to serve you guys. We're here on the same team. Are we? Are you with me? All right, so I have something, something ready for you guys. You see, I'm going to start with a small illustration. Um, so how many people can agree with me with the making assumptions in relationships can be dangerous? Assuming something to be true about the other person, like their likes or dislikes. How many folks have done that? I've done it. I, I have assumed a lot of stuff. I'm not proud of that. Because, <laughs> see, assuming things is literally like guessing. You see, you're guessing stuff about the other, per the other person, right? We have, you know, we have immediate friends, like, you know, our family, you know, brothers, cousins, uncles, aunties. But then we have our friends at work. Co-workers, we have friends, you know, I don't know, Walmart, stores. Um, but you see, when you come to assuming things, like their likes or dislikes, this could be very easy to do, right? Are you guys following me? This could be very easy to do. But when we take the time and act on that assumption, only to find out that you assume wrong could be extremely problematic. Say with me, problematic. problematic. And embarrassing. I've done it. And I'll give you a personal example here in a little bit, but I want, you, I want you guys to understand that this is something, in fact, sometimes we might be doing that every day. So we got we to gotta just analyze ourselves today. See, this is going to be my personal example. You see, as husbands, buying a gift or a birthday present, uh, a Valentine's gift for our wives can be hard sometimes to decide, right? And I'm talking to the loudest men. I, I mean, I struggle sometimes. Though, I already know what my, my, my wife likes. I know exactly the things she likes. But as husbands, we want to go above and beyond, right? We want to find a specific gift. We want to find, a, you know, the gift that, you know, goes and say, I mean, you just want to please her, right? Because you love her. Are you with me? 
And so for my wife's birthday, some time ago, she had been mentioning a household item that she needed for quite some time, and I, and I kept forgetting to buy it. I kept forgetting, guys. I don't know if you forget things. I forget things, right? And I assumed that that would be an amazing gift. So I went out of, out of my way and bought it. I was like, man, that was, that was going to make a good gift, a present gift, right? And then at her birthday gathering, she, when she opened the gift, she wasn't as excited as I thought she would be. She was kind of grateful. Yeah, thank you for her gift. And she kind of thanked me. And I'm not sure if I should just, I'm going to say it out loud. I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm part of Lobos right now. So I'm just going to say why I, I bought her so that you guys kind of get how bad it kind of guessed. <laughs> and I bought her an actual iron. I, I bought her an iron. So, <laughs> but, well, here's the thing, guys. So, I give her that. My, my assumption might have been a little bit off, right? Are you guys agreeing with me? So, that, that takes me to my very first point. My very first point is, you're not connecting when you think you are. You see, I thought I was connecting. I was like, yes, this is going to be an amazing gift. I was like, she's going to be super happy about it. She's going to be thrilled. She's going to enjoy it. And on top of that, I was like, you know, she needs it. So I know for a fact she's going to want it. <laughs> right? Are you with me? Yeah. So I thought I was connecting. But guess what? I wasn't. You're not connecting when you think you are. And so sometimes we just got to ask ourselves, are we actually connecting? Are we making things work? Or are we not going to? Are, are we guessing? Are we assuming? And that takes me to my second point, which is you don't want to make assumptions in your relationship with God. How many folks can agree with me? You don't, right? You see, it is very easy to make assumptions. So we have to be, we just have to be straightforward, guys. We have to know exactly if we're connecting or not. My third point is we need to ask ourselves, what are God's likes and dislikes? And for that, we have the word. Are you ready? Are you guys ready to start asking God exactly what is his likes? What is he like? What is his dislikes? And for that, we have the word. Are you with me? All right, tell your neighbor there. Tell your neighbor, hey, we need, to, we need, we need this relationship to work, right? It's very important that we get it. So today, I'm, I'm going to be focusing on two very important things. Two very important points are essentials, essentials for building our relationship with God. And the very first point is very easy because I feel like everybody kind of already knows this one. And see, the very first point is faith. Say with me, faith. faith. And we're going to go to the word in Hebrews 11.6. We're going to read it here in a little bit. I want you to know. Now, I know a lot of you guys. I know. I know you know. And you know that I know. We all have faith, Right? We, we have faith. I can see that you have faith because you showed up today. You showed up today, what? Well, believing that there's going to be a word given to you so that you can understand. And so you got ready. You got up in the morning. You got ready. You're like, today, I'm ready to receive a word. So you have faith. And guess what? Today, today you are going to be receiving something amazing. So let's go into the word. And I want you guys to just follow me. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. Who? God. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Now, I, wanna, I want you guys to know something. It don't matter if you're just a new believer right now or if you have 10 years of being a Christian, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. It doesn't matter, guys. You need to believe. You need to have faith. You want to please God? You got to have faith. Say with me, faith. faith. I got to have faith. Faith, yes, we got to believe that. You see, it doesn't matter if you just, you just give your, God, your life to God yesterday, a week, a month. It don't matter. Faith is faith. I mean, you, you need to apply it to your life. It's an everyday thing, guys. Right? Are you with me? All right. So faith is committing to something without knowing the outcome. You commit to it. Right? You got to trust. Say, we're going we're, 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 we're to trust God. We're going to trust him. So it is very important. If you want to please God, 
You got to believe it, man. You got to believe it. You got to trust God. You, you got to trust what he says. You got to trust who he is. You got to trust his promises. You got to trust his word. If you start doing those actions, you're going to please God. And you're going to have favor of God. Right? That's like a, that's like a big check you want to have. You see, I need a little bit of grace. So if I want a little more grace, I got to, you know, I got to have faith on God. Are you with me? Are you following me? All right. So that's my very first point. I want you guys, you got to have faith. You got to have it. You want this relationship to work? You got to believe. Amen? And then the other thing is, in the book of James 2.25, 2.26, it says that faith without actions, faith without works is death. You see, I know, I know that you know, I know that you believe and yes, we do believe, but how many folks take action onto that faith? Just meditate on that for a second. Do you actually move and act on it? Or do you just believe? There's a very two different things, guys. Faith without works is dead. So we need to act. Start acting. Amen? Are you with me? All right. Faith. That's my first point. Just just, just meditate on that a little bit. And then now I'm going to go to my second point. And this point is a little bit controversial. This point, because you see, this, this point is kind of a little, it, 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 it's, it's that point that kind of pushes our buttons. But I want you to know we all need it. My second point is, call, say with me, humility. Humility. Do you have it? You see, you see, it's funny because if someone asks you, are you humble? Are you humility? Do you have humility? Well, I'm not sure if you could answer that because someone else has to decide that for you. I don't think you can actually say, oh, I'm humble, right? Does that make sense? So that leads me to my second point. And let's go to the word. 1 Peter 5, 5 and 6. And are you with me? All right, let's go. Do you guys have your, well, let's, let's go ahead and read it. Likewise, and this, this is Peter talking to the church. This is Peter giving advice to the elders and the whole church, literally, guys. So let's read it. Read with me. Likewise, you who are younger, be subject to the elders. Clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility towards one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So therefore, humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time, He may exalt you. So what are we learning today? Just ask yourself. Are you humble enough? You see, if you get humble right, you're going to get God right. It's that simple, guys. So we need to, you know, just kind of humble ourselves. So I, I, let's ask ourselves, what does biblical humility look like? Do you guys know what that is? If you get humility right, you get God right. If we have the proper attitude and the perspective, we are going to make our relationship with God thrive, Right? We want this to work out. In fact, that's the very important relationship. That's the most important relationship, guys, in our lives. It's the relationship with God. So we, we got to have, we, it's like having the correct idea of who God is versus, versus who am I in position, which is equal. It defines, it reflects in, in our attitude and our character. So I want, there's a lot to unpack there, guys. Our attitude is the way a person views and evaluates something or someone. My question to you today is, how are you viewing God today? Do you see God like someone, like a regular relationship? Because let me tell you, he's the all-knowing God. He's all-powerful. It's amazing. Declaring the end since the beginning, just like Tom was saying, it's like he knows our hairs. Like, he knows our thoughts. He knows the words I'm going to say before I say them, guys. That's crazy, right? He's so powerful. It's like, this relationship has to work. Are you with me? Are you with me? All right. So our attitude. How about our character? The way someone thinks, feels, or behaves. How are we behaving towards God? How are we behaving, guys? So there is God, 
the A, the A position, right? The Almighty God, and there's me, the B position. There's God, and there's me. Are you with me? He is the potter. We are the clay. He's the shepherd. We are the sheep. He's the father. We're his children. We're whole different positions here, guys. Are you with me? All right. So let's take a look at what, what a clear picture of humility looks like. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. It says, Arise and go down to the potter's house. And there I will let you hear my words. So I went down to the potter's house. And there he was working in his wheel. So I want you guys to picture that right now. Just You can see the wheel moving, right? You can see the feet of the feet going. His foot going at it. And there... The vessel he was making of clay was spoiled. In some versions, it says that the, the, the clay was marred in the potter's hand. And he worked, in, he worked it into another vessel, as it seems good to the potter to do. Then the word of the Lord came to, him, to me. It says, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter has done? Declares the Lord. Behold, like the clay in the potter's hand, so are you. In my hand, O house of Israel, if at any time I declare concernings of a nation or a kingdom that I will pluck up and break down and destroy, and if that nation concerning which I have spoken turns from its evil, I will relent of the disaster that I intended to do it. And if at any time I declare concernings of a nation or kingdom that I will build and plant it, and if it does evil in my sight, not listening to my voice, then I will relent of the good that I have intended to do to it. Now, therefore, say to the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, Thus say the Lord, Behold, I am shaping disaster against you and, dev and devising a plan against you. Return everyone from his evil ways and amend your ways and your deeds. This is a beautiful illustration, right? Are you, are, do you guys understand? Do you guys understand? You see, you, you, you guys got to let me know if I'm, if I'm properly uh, saying things, okay? You see, I, I struggle sometimes, but this is where the, the Lord kicks in. This is where the Holy Spirit is like, I asked the Holy Spirit, I was like, God, please just, my, my point here is I want to be just as clear as a cup of water. I want him to fully understand. We, we got to get our heads right, guys. All right? So... Now that we read the clear picture of what humility looks like, it leads me to my first point. My, fir my very first point, it's in verse 4. It says, God is not asking for advice. He's not. You see, the potter does the shaping as he seems is best. He's not asking for advice, guys. See, you see, do we have any bakers here? Any, any, any people who do cakes, cookies? Don't it? I mean, don't. Yeah, there you go. So when you, when you guys are baking, you guys already have a vision of what that, that cake is going to look like, right? So you guys shape it as you guys think it's best. The well, same thing is here, guys. He's the potter. We are the clay. You see, he has a vision. There is a vision in the mind of the potter. Though sometimes we think we, our vision is better, right? Sometimes. But it's not, guys. See, God gave you. He made you. Do you have certain qualities that not everybody has? Not everybody has. And God made you with a purpose. There's a vision for you. God wants to use you like he's using me right now, guys. I mean, look at me, fellas. Just look at me. I've never thought I would be here at Lagos preaching the word. But see, it took humble. I needed to humble myself. I needed to have faith. You see, when you, when you put the God's vision to work, Things are going to be way different, guys. And so you are the clay. There's a vision in the mind of the potter. So God, God wants you to know that today. So you see, God is not asking for advice. Tell, you, tell your neighbor right there, God is not asking for advice. Tell him. That's my very first point on verse 4. Now, in verse 6, let's go ahead and read verse 6 where it says, But it says that God is in control. You are in my hand. It says, it says right, right on the word, it says that you are in my head. We're, God is not in our hands, folks. We didn't choose God. God chose us. You see, he already had a plan for you. 
So God is in control of the process. Again, God is on the A position and we are on the B position. You see, the big key on this verse is that the lesser always submits to the greater. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? This reminds me of my younger version, guys. When I started doing life, when I got married and I started looking for my job, like to work, right? And so I did roofing for a few years. So guess what? When I started doing roofing and I noticed the older guys, right? The guys who were roofers then. And I got there and I'm like, oh, I could get this done easy. I'm like, if I do it my way, I think I could get it done faster. You see, that's where I thought. I thought I was going to do it faster. I was like, it's going to benefit me. But guess what? I was wrong. Right? Them roofer guys, were, they, 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 they've done it for many times, many years. So it's like, who am I to show up to a new job and say, oh, well, if I, did, if I do it this way, it's going to work out better? Like, no. They knew better because they've done it longer, longer, like a lot longer. And so the lesser submits to the greater. And God is telling you, look, guys, I'm in control. I'm in control of the process. I'm in control of whatever is going in, in your life currently. So you see, God is speaking to you guys right now as, as I'm giving this message. He's telling you, God is in control. He is in control. Whatever it is, you, whatever the, 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 the obstacles, whatever the, the travels, whatever the trials, whatever you're going through, God is in control, guys. Isn't that beautiful? Now, my third point is today on verse 8 where it says, let me pull it up real quick, where it says, and if, at the, and if that nation concerning which I have spoken turns from its evil, say with me, turns, I will relent of the disaster that I had intended, intended to do to it. Now, that's, that's my third point right there. Today, we have the opportunity to turn. Say with me, we have the opportunity today. To turn. Let's turn today. To repent and turn to the potter so he can fix brokenness. Guys, sometimes, let me, let me be real with you guys. Because I struggle with this. And if I struggle with this, I know you guys struggle, struggle with that. You see, we are children of God. Sometimes we want to do things our way. Sometimes. No, that's, that's, that's always, literally, always. We want to do things our way, right? You see, God is telling you today, God is telling you, you got to, like literally, guys, you got to turn towards the potter. Like literally, like sometimes we just, we just want to avoid it, right? Because you see, guys, this is an everyday thing. It's everyday, guys. And I know some, and I can relate to you guys, you see, because I feel like, Many times, I felt like a failure. I was like, how can I turn to the potter when I keep failing? How can I turn to him? When can I, how? How if I keep failing? If I keep doing the things that, you know, doesn't define a Christian, right? When I get angry, when I commit certain sin, and it's like, this, this clay, it's like, it, it just doesn't want to turn because you feel like this, Shame, right? But God is telling you today, you got to turn. Turn to the potter in humility. Do it. Are you with me? Today we have the opportunity to, that, to repent. And so this is, this is something amazing we don't want to miss. Tell your neighbor, don't miss this. Tell them. And that leads me to my last point, number four, which is on verse 8, eight through 11. Literally, guys. Let's read uh, 8 through 11. Number 8. It says, and if that nation concerning which I have spoken turns from its evil ways, I will relent of the disasters that I intended to do to it. And if at any time I declare concerning of a nation or a kingdom that I will build and plant, and plant it, and if, that, and, and if it does evil in my sight, not listening to my voice, then I will relent of the good that I have intended to do to it. Now therefore say to the men of Judah, those saying to the Lord, Behold, I'm shaping disaster against you and devising a plan against you. So re return, everyone. Literally, guys, I want you guys to focus on that point. Return, everyone. You see, we know that the clay was marred, but if in humility we repent 
God is willing to relent, guys. He's willing to reconsider the plan he had for us. Let me tell you guys something. The world out there, they think they're doing the right thing. You see, they don't see it because this is something spiritual. It's full of darkness out there, guys. It's full of darkness. And so we need to turn to the potter so we can reconsider the plan he had for us. You see, when we're not, when we're not Christians, we were lost. And we didn't, we didn't know that until we actually accepted Christ, right? So out there, all of those folks out there, they're lost. You're either safe or lost. And I'm declaring today you are safe. And that we're going to turn to the potter. You see, each one of you, individually. This is individually, guys. You have to turn to the potter. Are you with me? This is an awakening lesson we don't want to miss. You see, sometimes I, I can feel like the Holy Spirit is telling you today, right now. You need to turn. You, need, you see, but it requires humility to turn. It requires faith. You see, sometimes I want you to picture like, like you're driving a car, right? You're driving the car. You're in control of the car. You see, when we become Christians, like you just let go of one hand and it's like, all right, I'm going to turn to Jesus, right? I'm going to follow his ways. But then you kind of still have the left hand in there, right? You like you still, I'm, I'm like, you feel like so, sort of like the pride is kicking in, right? Like, yes, yes, I heard you. Yes, I know that you are God. I know that you know better than me, but I, I, I just feel like my way is still kind of somehow meeting my expectations, right? And so you still have that left hand in that wheel, on that steering wheel. But that's where, that, this is where faith kicks in, kicks in, guys. Where you have to let go of the steering wheel. You have to let go of it. And let God take control of it, right? You see, His ways are better than our ways. You have to let go, guy. You see, we know that the, the, we know that the clay was marred. And a lot of you guys maybe feel like this today. If you feel like you already made a mistake, like you already made a choice... And kind of just martyr your life. Because that's what it feels like. When we don't follow God or when we don't follow His Word, you feel marred. Now, let me give you the, 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 the definition of marred. It, it means like it got ruined. It's like the clay got ruined. The clay, the clay got imperfect. The clay got broken. The clay got damaged. The clay was deformed. The, 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 deformed. the, the, the clay was impaired. How many, how, many, how many of you guys feel like that sometimes? I do feel like Sometimes I feel like, man, why can't I just do what God is asking me to do? It's hard. It's really hard, guys. I'm being astray with you guys. I'm being real. This is hard. But God is giving us the opportunity today. Just turn to the potter. Humble yourself in humility. In humility. You see, sometimes we feel like the, those mistakes that we've made can be fixed because of that imperfection, the brokenness, fear, sin, pride, insecurities. God is talking to you guys today for there is nothing impossible for God. There's nothing impossible. So if you are, like I used to feel like that. I was like, God, you know, I messed up really bad. I really did mess up. And it's like, how can I turn to the potter? It takes a lot of humility, guys. Say with me, you could do it. I know you could do it. I did it. If I, if I did it, I know you guys can do it. You got to have faith. And you got to start acting humility. Say, say with me, we're going to start being humble. We're going to start being humble. We're going to start listening to the word. We gotta start reading the word. We gotta start activating and acting on that faith. Amen. God can redeem you. He can reshape. He can shape you. He can reshape you. All you need to do is turn to Him. Humble yourself in faith. You see, there has to be an attitude flip, right? We have to flip the attitude, guys. You see, how many of you guys can relate to me? If how many here have kids? Any parents here in the room? 
Just, let me give you an illustration real quick. This, this just came up. You see, this is how I feel. I have, I have an 11-year-old. I have a 10-year-old. I have a 5-year-old. You see, how do I feel when I'm trying to teach these girls something? It's like they already know it. Right? Are you with me? Like, they know everything, right? I'm trying to teach my 11-year-old how to play the guitar right now. <laughs> Can you picture how that looks like? It's like, try this, try that. But it's like, no. I'd rather do this. I'd rather do that. It's like, she already knows. I was like, how do you know all these things? It's like, there has to be this humility, right? If you really want to learn, you see, I, I've been there, done that, right? Like, I think I know best. And they're like, no, they, they just want to do their own thing. Are you relating? You see, sometimes God, God is doing the same with us, guys. You see, though we don't see the vision, though we don't see where we're heading, it's like we don't have a clear picture, but it's like God knows. He knows, guys. He's telling you, you got to turn to Him. I love this vision. I mean, turn to your right for a, for a minute. Turn to your right. That says believing. You got to believe. You got to belong to. And you got to become like Jesus. But for that, we need to believe. And little by little, we got to become like Jesus. Are you with me? Let me be clear with you guys. The main point of this message, guys, is like, we want to reach people for Jesus, right? But let, me, let me tell you something. You cannot give. You cannot give what you don't have. Do you want the relationship out there with the lost people to work? You have to make this relationship work first. You have to, guys. We got you really want to glorify God? You got to get to know God first. You got to get to know him first. How do we get to know him? The word. We read the word. All right? And so if we, if we, if we, if we, well, that's the point of the, that's the point of the kingdom. That's the point of the kingdom. We want to connect with the folks out there. We got to connect with God first. Amen? All right, humil humility. We got to have humility. My next point is humility allows us to do the works that God intended us to do for his kingdom. In humility. So I want you guys to meditate. I'm going to give you guys some points here real quick. So they, how does... So just ask yourself in conclusion, what does humble person thinks like? What do you guys think that is like? What does a humble person think like? And the reason why I want you guys to think, because humble thinking leads to humble behavior. And so, first point is, I am a son and he is my father. It's a very loving father. He gave his life for us, right? So, he loves me. Therefore, I need to let him teach me some, some things. I need to let him teach me. How's, how's he going to teach me? Through, through the word. There's a lot of teachings. A lot, a lot of teachings to do. To learn. Amen? We go back to the same thing again, guys. We go back to the same thing. He's the potter. We are the clay. He's the shepherd. We're the sheep. He's the teacher. We're the disciples. He's greater. We're the less. He's the mentor. We are his followers. He's in the A, A position. Say with me, A position. God is on the A position. All right, so we need to start humbling ourselves. He loves me, therefore, I need to let him teach me. I am created to cooperate. Guys, we, wanna, we, we really want this relationship with God to thrive, right? We want, we want this relationship to work. So there's a cooperation going on, guys. Again, no to pride, yes to humbleness. And let me give you an, a quick illustration again. How many folks here have had a, a, a surgery? Have, has any of you guys had a surgery? Let me, let me tell you guys something. So, I, I mean, I've never had one, but I've seen TV shows, right? Like, I've, I've never been there, but you know, I've seen it. What, what it looks to be like, the surgeon, is the person who knows best, right? He knows what's going on. He, he's going to perform the surgery. And so you have the surgeon. Then you have the 
helper or you know the assistant of the surgeon right and so like this this surgeon is ready to start the surgery he's he's ready to cut up you know and he, he's he's you know they walk in with their hands and their gloves you know and he's ready to perform right and it's like he tells he tells the helper he, he tells he tells him hey can, can i get the tan blade right is that what i say that's that's what it sounds like right Maybe. something like that right you guys get the point right well what happens when the nurse, the helper, decides to, hey, I, you should probably use this instead. It's like, no, it doesn't work like that, right? The surgeon knows what's going on. Can you picture what will happen? If, <laughs> how, how embarrassing that is, right? Like, no, just use this other tool instead. It's like, no, the surgeon knows best. He's properly trained. They went to school. They have a PhD, right? They, know, they have a career. They... they they, 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 they got the homework done, right? So they know best. So what would it look like if the, the helper, the assistant, is trying to tell the, the surgeon, no, I think this works better. It's like, no, that's not how it works. That's not how things work, right? Like if I go and work on my car and I tell Jeff Giles to help me do an oil change and it's like a 10 millimeter socket to drain the oil and it's like, here, brother, just use the channel locks instead. It's like... What is Jeff going to tell me? He's like, get out of here, bro. That's not how it works. You see, someone is always in charge. Are you with me? God is in charge. And so I'm created to cooperate. There's a cooperation going on, folks, for the kingdom, right? What does that look like? We got to go out there, make relationships, connect with the people. But in order for us to connect with them, the cooperation, we need to cooperate with God first. We need to connect to the Lord. We need to connect with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Are you with me? So there's this cooperation going on. So we need to cooperate, guys. Again, A position, B position. What does humble things like? I am anchored to his vision. Versus who? Versus what vision? Your vision versus cultural vision. Versus trauma, vision, right? Where something happened in your life, like some problem happened and it caused trauma in your life and that kind of just made you start acting differently, right? And your vision. You see, God has a vision and we have to be, I am anchor to his vision. Are you with me? Are you following me? So therefore, guys, it is very important, guys, that we humble ourselves. Just like the clay, he needs to work with the potter. You see, God is going to do whatever he has to do to make things work out. But if in humility we turn to the potter and we tell him, God, all right, I'm in. I'm listening. Please, just, I repent, right? Things are going to be way different, guys. Are you with me? Are you following me? All right. So, I know the Holy Spirit right now. I know this message. It's literally, folks. If this message is speaking to you right now, maybe you feel like you haven't let go of the wheel, right? Of the steering wheel of your life. And it's like God is calling you. He's calling you because He wants you to do life. Like a children of God. Are you with me? You see, folks, this is an everyday thing. It's not that... It's not that we're going to be free of making bad choices, guys. But we have a choice then and after we make a bad choice. My question to you is, what's your choice going to be today? Are you going to come to Jesus? Are you going to humble yourself? Are you going to start listening to his word? He's the almighty God. He wants to, you really want to make this relationship with God work? You got to start listening to him. Are you with me? All right, guys. So today, how do you want? We need to ask God, how do you want me to do life, God? Because lately, I've just been focusing on my wants, on my expectations, on, on my needs. But you have a vision for my life. And it's a very important vision, guys. Very important. It's very important that we humble ourselves. I want you to do something today. Why don't you just stand on your feet real quick. Stand up.
And if this message touch your life or is speaking to you, I know it is because it spoke to me like you don't have an idea. You see, I thought I was a good Christian. I was going to church every Sunday. I was going to church on Fridays. And somewhat I felt like I wasn't connecting right. I felt like, yes, yes, I'm doing certain things that pleases God, but it's like maybe God wants to do more than just what we want, right? And so if the Word is speaking to you today, and it's like you feel like, man, I need to turn to God. Like, I really do. But sometimes we feel like we can't, right? It's so hard. But today, God is giving you the opportunity. God is giving you that beautiful opportunity. We have today, guys. And this is every day. He's giving you the opportunity to come to Him. Are you with me? And so, if God is in control of the process, just come to Him. He's the surgeon. He's our father. He's our teacher. He wants to do something in your life today. Are you with me? So right now we're going to take a few moments. And I want you to just examine yourself right now. Just examine yourself right there where you are. Are you doing what God is calling you to do? You have to believe in order to become like Him. That's the main point, guys. We've got to glorify Jesus. Every day, I'm going to ask the worship team to come up real quick. I want the folks at Lagos Church, if you feel like this word is talking to you today, I want you to know this altar is open. I want you to know that we want to pray for you. If you feel like you need some prayer, or if you feel like, you know what? I want to turn to the potter today. Today is the perfect day. Mm -hmm.